Hey guys, thanks for joining me for an episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Super Camelot. This is a game by Lynn Vander Studios and Catalyst Games. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly a half an hour to an hour to play, and it is a competitive game, so each of the players is working against the other players to be the first to reach the objectives and win the game. So in the game itself, you are playing a hero from King Arthur's court, and you guys are setting off into the Avalon Forest to either get enough gems to meet your needs, or to gain the relics that will unlock the castle so that you can capture the Holy Grail. If you're the first to do this, then you win the game. So my opinions of this game so far, as this is very interesting. It definitely will show my age because uh, it takes you back to those 8-bit days with Nintendo playing your first role-playing game, adventuring game, where you're uh, slashing and fighting monsters, picking up rocks, looking underneath things, bashing the bushes, and all kinds of other fun stuff. So it's definitely very nostalgic, and the artwork and all that really lends to that theme. You really get engrossed in that old-school feel. So I would definitely recommend this game for players that are that are familiar with those older games, um, or newer players that are definitely going to like this one, too. It's very simple. There's not a lot of rules to complicate things, and just a lot of fun, and it plays very quick. And there's two different ways you can win. Like I said, you can either gain the three relics that you need and be the first back to the castle to gain the Holy Grail, or by getting different items and finding different gems, if you can be the first to collect 40 gems, you will also be the overall winner. So that being said, these are just my opinions. I'd also love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you guys are thinking of this game, if this is one that you're interested in backing. And if you enjoy these videos, please also consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel, because it'll help me to continue to grow and be able to bring these really cool games to you guys first. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll show you what this is all about. Super Super Camelot comes with six different characters from King Arthur's Tale. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to choose one of these characters to play as, and each character's board is going to outline the different actions a character can perform during their turn, the win conditions for the game, and each character is also going to have a special ability. Once a player selects a character to play, they'll receive their character's little standee. They'll also receive three shield tokens to mark the player's health, which each character will start with six health points. A full shield is two points, and a broken shield is worth one point. Finally, each player will also receive a screen for their characters. The game is played in the Forest of Avalon. In the beginning of the game, you're going to go ahead and set out four tiles, and then you'll place the magical castle in the middle of those four tiles. Then you'll go ahead and populate those four tiles with the different bushes, rocks, different enemy types, and treasures. From there, then the heroes will start along the different spots on the magical castle, and you'll also place the Holy Grail in the center. So for our game, let's go ahead and say that we're going to use three characters. Um, we'll go with King Arthur, Merlin, and Lancelot. From there, then you would determine the starting player by rolling the dice. The player that has the most stars will be the player that starts the game. And then from there, during the game, it'll go in clockwise order with each player taking a turn. During each player's turn, they can perform three actions from the selection of actions that they have. So let me show you guys a player's turn now. So during a player's turn, they're going to get to perform up to three actions from those listed on their card. And they're going to be using these actions to explore Avalon to try to find the three different relics and be the first one back to the castle to unlock it and gain the Holy Grail. So during a player's turn, they can perform move actions, and they can move in orthogonal directions only. There's no diagonal movement allowed, and they can move up to three spaces per action. So with Lancelot here, with his being in his starting space, he can move into either one of these two spaces or this space, but the bushes are going to block his movement to that other space. So let's go ahead and move over here next to these carnivorous plants, and then we're going to do an attack action for our second action that we've chosen. To do an attack action, you're going to go ahead and roll three dice, and you're going to choose a arc that's going to take up both orthogonal spaces and the uh, connecting diagonal space. So we would attack these three spaces here, otherwise we could potentially attack those three, or these three up here, or these three over here. So we're going to go and roll the dice and see what we get. All right, and then we have Lancelot does have a special action where he can re-roll one of his dice if he wanted to, but this is a pretty solid roll. So we've done three points of damage, and we got a star, which is a wild, so we can change it into anything we want. 
So we're going to make it a diamond. For each diamond that we roll, we get to gain a litter item, uh, litter card if we just we de destroy any bushes, and we also get to gain a treasure if we defeat one enemy. So our enemies are one point apiece. So we've done enough damage to defeat both of our enemies. So we'll remove both of our enemies from the board, and then we'll draw a small loot card or a uh, small loot card for the diamond. And so we have found a health potion. So this would let us recover one health, but we are at maximum health right now. Now, if we would have had any bushes in those spaces, we would have gotten to draw a litter card as well. As each diamond lets us draw one card for each for one enemy and one bush. So we would have needed two diamond car uh, two diamond symbols to get loot from both of the enemies. Now we can also use our actions to pick up items, special items that are out there like relics and whatnot. If one of our enemies had dropped an item, like a key, we could move over that item to pick it up and add it to our inventory. In order to open a chest, you would need a key, a key is required, and you have to be in the bottom part of the chests. And which, once you've opened the chest, you'll discard the key and flip it over so it'll never be used again. And then you would draw a small treasure item card. And those cards are going to give you all kinds of different effects. Another big part of the game is exploring. As our characters move off of their starting tiles, they're going to explore further on in Avalon. So with our earlier example with Lancelot, let's go ahead and say that he moves off this tile. So we would draw a new tile from the deck and add it in the same orientation, connecting the tree to the current tiles. From there, he would have to move on to the tile that he explored. And then we would populate it by adding the different things. So we have some bushes here. We found a relic, so we would place the relics in there. And then we have a couple of Dark Knights that we drop in there as well. From there, if Lancelot had any additional actions, then he could go ahead and perform those actions. Now, any tile that you add cannot be explored further in this direction. You can only add tiles around the central squares, creating a secondary square that has to be touching that central square. So after our hero has finished off taking all of his actions, then the enemies are going to get to take their turn. So any enemy on the same tile as the hero will activate and will try to reach that hero to attack them. If there are other heroes on that tile, then they will attack them if the chosen hero cannot or the active hero cannot be targeted. So let's take a look at the three different enemies that are included in the game. The first one is the mimic which will try to move and get to one of the adjacent spaces of that hero. If it does, then it's going to steal a treasure item from that hero if he has any, and then it'll do one damage to him. And it'll hold that treasure item until that hero is able to kill that mimic. And if another hero kills it, then they will gain that treasure item. Then we have the carnivorous plant, which will not move. It's simply going to rotate in a clockwise manner until it can draw either an orthogonal or diagonal line that is uninterrupted or is not blocked by any type of ob obstacle to the hero. If it can, then it's going to deal two damage to that hero. And finally, we have the Dark Knight, which if it, ha if it can draw an uninterrupted path to the hero, it'll move there. So with our Dark Knight here, he can move along this path here and reach our hero. At that point, then he's going to deal three damage to that hero. When a hero takes damage, they get to roll one dice, and if they roll a shield or star, then they've blocked all that damage. Otherwise, if they don't roll that symbol, then they will take the full brunt of the damage. So, so there are two different paths to victory to this game. As the players explore the different areas of Avalon, they're trying to find the three different relics. The first player that is able to collect all three relics and make it back to the castle, one of the castle starting spaces, can claim the relic. That is one of the winning conditions. The other one is collecting gems. There are three different gems included in the game. The green one is worth one point, the blue one is worth five, and the red is worth ten. Also, items will grant you uh, additional gems that will just count towards your gem total. And if a player is able to collect 40 points in gems, then they will win the game immediately as well. Let me take you guys through a few turns in the game as well. So we're going to go ahead and start with our players placing their figures out. So we're just going to put a, them out in just areas. And we're going to go ahead and start the game with Lancelot here. So he's going to go ahead and start. He His first action, he's going to move up to three spaces. So let's go ahead and shift him up here into that space. And then he's going to do his second action to attack here.
So we're going to go ahead and roll our three dice. And he his special ability lets him re-roll one of his attack dice. So he's done three damage and a shield, which isn't going to help him in this situation. So he'll take out the Mimic and one of the bushes. But he's not going to get any rewards because he didn't roll any of the diamonds. So his third action, he's going to go ahead and move again. So one, two, three up here. And then the it'll go to the enemy's turn. So our carnivorous plant here is going to rotate in a clockwise manner. And it cannot draw a line of sight to Lancelot because he is behind the bush. So it will not activate. So we're just going to keep it facing this way. And then we'll move over to the next player who is Guinevere. So for her, at the start of her turn she can heal one of her wounds. She doesn't take any yet so then we can go ahead and move on. So she's going to go ahead and move on down here and attack these three spaces here. Alright, so she rolled two shields and a diamond. So she will destroy the bush with the diamond, or with because the bushes automatically are destroyed, so then she'll draw one litter. And she found a bomb in that space. So anytime an item is found, it is just dropped into the space where it is found. And then she'll have to move over and pick it up. So then she's going to attack again. This time she'll attack here. And she did destroy the bush and the carnivorous plants. That is her third action. And then the plant is going to rotate. And he can shoot diagonally, so he is going to hit Guinevere. And he will do two damage to her, so she's going to go ahead and roll one dice to see if she blocks it. She rolled a star, which is a wild, so she will select the shield and does not take any damage. Moving on to King Arthur, he's going to go ahead and move over here and attack those carnivorous plants. He rolled two hits, so he's going to split those between the both plants and do the damage to each. He didn't roll any uh, diamonds, so he's not going to get any rewards for that. And then his third action, he will move, he's going to move over here. Then the knight will activate and come over and attack him. He's going to go ahead and roll one dice. He did not block it, so he is going to take three damage. From here, then we're going to move back over to Lancelot, so... With uh, Lancelot, he is going to move one, two, three here, and he'll attack these spaces here. He rolled two stars, so he's going to change one of those to uh, damage and one to a diamond. So he's going to defeat the Carnivorous Plant, which is going to allow him to draw one small loot. And he found a health, which he is at full health, so he's not going to get any rewards for that. And then he'll do his third action. He'll attack here to try to take that bush out. He successfully did that and rolled a diamond. So he's going to get to draw a litter. Another health. Unfortunately, again, nothing good for him. And then we're on to Guinevere. So Guinevere will attack to try to knock out that carnivorous plant. She does, but does not get a reward. And at the beginning of her turn, again, she would heal, but she hasn't taken any damage. So then she's going to go ahead and move. And she'll get the, the bomb to place next to her. And then she'll do one final attack to try to get that bush out of the way. She does successfully hit it and destroy it, and she will get to draw a litter. So she found a green gem. So she'll place the green gem behind her screen. And then we're moving over to King Arthur. So he's going to go ahead and attack the knight. He needs to do at least two damage to, to take it down. He rolled two diamonds and no hits. So he does not succeed. He's going to go ahead and take his second action to attack again. Alright, so this time he rolled a wild. So we're going to convert that over to two. That'll take out that knight, and he does, does get a reward for the diamond. So the, the knight allows him to take a big loot. So we found a small key. 
that will go in that space. And then he's going to go ahead and move. So one, two, three. He's taken the key. And that is the end of his turn. So he'll have to wait until next turn to pop that treasure chest. And we're back up to Lancelot. So Lancelot's going to go ahead and explore. So he's going to move one, two. And we're going to drop a new tile. And he'll move one space onto it. So three. And then we have two knights. And a bunch of bushes. And our first objective. So then his second action, he's going to go ahead and move again and try to hit both of those knights. So let's see if he can manage it. All right, so he, uh, he did roll a star, which is a wild, and then he's going to roll his other dice over again. There we go. We did enough to take out both of the dark knights. And we did roll one gem, so we will get one reward. So we're going to take a big loot card. And it's another key, so a key will be dropped in one of the knight's spaces. And that'll end his turn, so we're on to Guinevere. So with Guinevere, she's going to go ahead... Whenever I'll move, one, two, three. And then she's gonna go ahead and get again move and she'll explore this new area. So that is her second complete move. Anytime a character moves out of an area, all the items are gonna be removed from it except for treasure chests. So then we'll populate this new area. She has a mimic right next to her, two stones. A bush, a treasure chest, and a dark knight. So she's going to go ahead and try to take that mimic out with her last action. Well, let's go ahead and see how the bomb works. Let's have some fun. So she's going to toss the bomb. It can target anywhere in her space, so she's going to target it there. And then she's going to roll her attack dice. All right, so she rolled two hits. So that's going to do two hits to everything in all nine spaces around that. So the Mimic will go, and the Knight will be taken out. Now, unfortunately, she did not roll any gems, so she's not going to receive any treasure for those kills. But she did clear the space, so she won't have to worry about taking any damage. So that is the end of her turn, so we're moving over to King Arthur. He's going to go ahead and spend that little key to open up a small chest. So he's received racing boots. Uh, these boots are perfect for running. You can move four spaces instead of three, and it is worth five gems. So that'll help him out. And we'll flip the chest over, showing that it's been opened. And then we're going to go ahead and move for his second action. So one, and then we'll explore. And again, once he moves off of there, we will clear the board. So we'll go ahead and move those over there. And a treasure chest. We got two mimics. And a dark knight. So he's still got two points of movement, but he's going to go ahead and stop there. And we'll go ahead and attack one of those mimics for his second action. So he rolled two shields and a star. So he's just going to go ahead and convert the star into a double hit to take out the Mimic. He didn't roll any gems, so he won't receive any treasure for that. In his third action, his third action, he's going to go here, and then the enemies will activate, so the Mimic will go first and move here. The Mimic will steal one item, so he's going to flip this item over and then attack. So Arthur will roll. He rolls a gem, so he's going to take another damage. And then the Dark Knight's going to move over and try to attack him as well. And Arthur will get to roll another. And he gets to re-roll his defense. So on the Mimic, he did roll, so he won't take that damage. And the Dark Knight. A gem, and he gets to re-roll, so 
the star will be turned into a shield and so he's blocked all the damage. So this is going to continue on until the players are able to either gather 40 points in gems or one of the players is able to find all three of the different items and make it back to the castle to take the uh, Holy Grail. Well, I hope this video gave you guys a good idea whether or not you want to back the game. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the creator's Kickstarter page and drop the, your comments there as well. I'm sure they would love to hear from you guys. As always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I do take into account everything you guys say to try to make the best videos possible. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.